Hello everyone, Aaron here and welcome back to Leet Code. Today we are doing the where will the ball fall problem. You have a 2D grid of size m by n representing a box and you have n balls. The box is open on the top and bottom sides. Let me try that one again. <laughs> the box is open on the top and bottom sides. Each cell in the box has a diagonal board spanning two corners of the cell that can redirect a ball to the right or to the left. A board that redirects the ball to the right spans the top left corner to the bottom right corner and is represented in the grid as a 1 of that. And a board that redirects the ball to the left spans the top right corner to the bottom left corner and is representing the grid as a minus one. That. We drop one ball at the top of each column of the box. Each ball can get stuck in the box or fall out the bottom. A ball gets stuck if it hits a V-shaped pattern between two boards or if a board redirects the ball into either wall of the box. Okay, so return an array answer of size n, where answer i is the column that the ball falls out of at the bottom after dropping the ball from the ith column at the top, or negative 1 if the ball gets stuck. Holy moly, okay. Um, that's complicated wording, but I think the idea is fairly simple. So if we see this, this one here starts in column 0, and it bounces around until it comes out at column 1. And all the rest of these get stuck, so you get a negative 1. If we could somehow come in here, we would ram into the wall and get stuck. So that's out. If we made it down here, we'd get stuck in a V. That's out. How do I want to do this? My immediate thought when I'm looking at something like this is I want to work bottom up. Because the bottom is known. The top, I know nothing. This could come out anywhere, these could come out anywhere, they could come out nowhere. But at the bottom, I know this is going to come out here, 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 and this is going to come out here. There are no other options. So if I know... Ah, but when I look at this one, if something were to come in here, it would go into the wall. But if something comes in here, it would scoot this way and go wherever this one goes, which we know is out there. And same for all of these. So the idea is if we say up here, if I come in here, I don't know where it's going to go other than I know it's going to go wherever this one leads. Yeah, that's what we want. Um, and the edge cases are we feed into the wall and we feed into a V. Okay, so, um, output grid is equal to, um, let's fill it with negative 1 times len grid 0 times len grid, uh, up 4 order in range Oops. typing len grid so this is a copy of our grid just filled with negative ones instead except for i in range len grid zero output grid of len grid minus 1 is equal to i. So the bottom row... Oh, no, that's not quite right. I need an extra row, don't I? So the bottom row down here, there's this imaginary one down here where we pop out the bottom. These are all filled with their i. Because if you get into them, they're, just get, they're, they're like cups at the bottom, basically, where we're going to collect the marbles. So I'm going to make an output grid, which is actually one larger than the true um, grid that we are given, row-wise. It's got one extra row, effectively. So, 
So, um, now it's for row in range len grid minus one, minus one, minus one. We're going to work from the bottom up. Um, yeah. So if I get here. For call in range len grid zero. So for each column, if I'm coming in here, what I want to do is, well, the board is going to be the grid row call. This is a plus one and this is a minus one. And, and that's quite useful for us because if this is a minus one, the out column is going to be column plus board, <laughs> which which is quite nice. Um, if out call is less than zero, or out call is greater than len grid, you know what? Height is going to be len grid. Width is going to be len grid zero just so I don't have to keep referring to these zeros and ones. Width, height plus one. Width, height, height minus one. Width, greater than or equal to the width. Um, outputs grid of row call is equal to negative one. So if this would lead us into a, that this is, uh, leads us into a wall. Um, LF board is equal to one and grid row call. Actually, what do I want to do here? I want to handle the V case basically. So if we come in here, we would normally want to go that way. But if this thing is a negative one, that's going to get us trapped into a, a V, leads to V, outputs grid row call equals minus one. And there's a symmetrical case, isn't there? LF board equals negative one and grid row, oh, um, call minus one is equal to one. I think there's a generalization here, but I'll come back to it in a second. Leads to V, outputs, grid, row, call, equals negative one. Else, if none of those things are true, outputs, grid, row, call, is equal to outputs, grid, row, plus one, out, call. So there we say, if we were told that we're going to bounce that way, then we just check where we would end up here. Yeah, because we came in on row three, so we're going to say, well, we're going to go out on row four, one to the right. So what's there? Excellent. Uh, so I was saying there's something happening here. And the thing is, call plus one, if board is one, that's out call. And if board is negative one, that's out call. And that's negative board and that's negative board. So I think actually the condition is LF grid row out call. 
call is this negative board. That is what leads us to a V. Not those two conditions. Well, it is those two conditions, but this is a more general version of that condition. This, to a certain extent, says if it's pointing us somewhere out, but there's a board that's gonna we're gonna bump into because it's going the opposite way, that is what a V is. Then I basically want to return output grid zero, row zero, because this this is the conclusion. Where do these go? Um, so that I feel like I rushed that and was not terribly articulate when I was trying to describe what was happening there. So the idea is we work from the bottom. We've got the cups down the bottom here, which says, well, everything that comes into the cup obviously came out of column zero, column one, column two, column three, column four. If we go up one layer, everything that came in, say here, the board slopes negative. So we're going to go to the he slopes positive, but it, the board is rep it's a negative board. Um, so we're going to go to the previous column down one because that's effectively what it means to follow, bounce off a negative board. We go down one still, but back one column, and we say, well, where is that going to end us up? Great, that's the answer, and so on and so forth, working our way up. It means we're computing exits that are never going to be reached, but we don't necessarily know that. Um, and the complete complexity of this is just going to be MN. There is no other work to do. Um, I think that's good. Is there a condition that... Yeah, no, no. I'm just sort of thinking... They've talked about Vs, but what about... Um, Lambdas, I guess, the capital lambdas, the thing, like capital A's. Can we hit those? So like this here, if this didn't have a... No, 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 we can't, we can't hit a capital A because if we did, there's either a V above it or there's another A or, yeah. No, we, we just can't hit it. Like if this is gone then we're just going to scoot straight down. If this is gone, we're going to scoot straight down. If they're both gone, they must be going like this, so there's another A above it, and then we're back in the same case. So there's no chance of actually hitting an A. <laughs> the only place you get hit an A is at the very top when they look like that, but the balls are being specifically placed on, on one side of the A, so you can't, you can't end up with this weird non-determinism. Um, right, let's do a typo check. Um, oops, width is sufficient now, we don't need a len width, we just need a width, and we don't uh, need that, but that's true everywhere. Let's try that again. Int object is not subscriptable where where am I trying show me what output grid is I don't know, it's a type error, but oh, that's what my problem is. So it starts right, and then I filled it in wrong here. Um, I was doing output grid height is equal to i, but I want how, how, height output grid at the very bottom position i is filled with i. That seems to work. Let's use all the example test cases which were a ball gets stuck against the wall and whatever that thing looks like. Pure zigzagging apart from one that gets stuck against the wall. We seem to be passing those tests and they seem fairly comprehensive. So let's submit it and see what happens. Now, I the big danger is we're not fast enough, but this feels 
pretty good. <laughs> Excellent. So the other approach here would have been to start at each position and basically just try and follow it. Um, the reason I didn't want to do that, why didn't I want to do that? There's a chance you're going to repeat a lot of work. If this goes here and this goes here, you end up rediscovering this path twice. Is that terrible? You're doing a lot of extra work, but here we're doing a lot of extra work tracking where these can go anyway. Man, maybe it would work both ways. Maybe it would work both ways. But to me, this felt more natural because here we know where the outcome is and we're going to build back to work out what the input is. This, this is a very uh, functional programming, very... It's, it's actually quite a recursive solution. We don't, we don't actually do any recursion, but the nature of the approach is quite recursive. I don't know how to solve um, this problem but if I solved this problem, I could then solve it easily. Similarly, I don't know how to solve that the problem I just said, but I, if I knew how to solve this, it would be easy. And that's exactly what I'm doing, this kind of recursive uh, thinking that basically lets me build this table very efficiently. Anyway, that's it from me this week. Do remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. In particular, do let me know what kind of stuff you want to, to see on the channel. Um, Obviously, I'm happy doing leak code. Some of these puzzles are very cool, but it might be nice to change it up a little bit. Do let me know if there's other kind of programming challenges you want me to do or, or explainers or anything like that. Let me know in the comments. I'd be very keen to hear. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>